Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Chris Cox, Executive Director of the National Rifle. How's everybody doing? Have you had a good CPAC so far? Good time? All right, let me ask you another question. Does anybody here love Sarah Palin? Now, if I walked out there and asked 100 of you why you love Sarah, I'd probably get 100 different answers. If you ask me, it might be because she's an unapologetic supporter of the right to keep and bear arms, is an avid hunter. You might love the fact that she rolls up her sleeves and goes out and works hard to elect leaders like Kelly Ayotte and Nikki Haley. You might love that she'd rather just tell Michael Bloomberg to have a Coke and a smile and stop telling us how to live our lives. I think one thing that we all love about Sarah is she drives liberals absolutely crazy. It's actually funny to watch, just they come unglued. They don't know what to do. They just don't know what to do. Is it because she took on the establishment and beat the incumbent mayor of Wasilla? Is it because she became the first female governor of the state of Alaska? The, the truth is it's not. The reason she drives them crazy is the reason we love her so much, and it's because she stands firmly in between our freedom and our opponents who want to drive this country into a place that we can't even recognize. That's what Sarah Palin does. That's why we love her. Please watch this video. Sarah Palin stole the show at this weekend's CPAC convention. She still knows how to fire up the conservative people. She is a superstar, and she's used that to try to help get people elected. She is fearless. She is principled. She can pick winners. She's definitely proved that she can be effective endorsing candidates. Sarah Palin jumped in early and supported Rand Paul. She supported Marco Rubio, Tim Scott, Pat Toomey, Nikki Haley, Deb Fisher, Jeff Flake, and myself. He's probably going to win this thing thanks to Sarah Palin. That energy that captures 16 she, she, Republican House seats. A lot of that came from her. She dominated one more time. Don't let the big consultants, the big money men, and the big bad media scare you off. When somebody's going to hold Republicans in Congress accountable, it's going to be Sarah Palin. They talk about rebranding the GOP instead of restoring the trust of the American people. How about rebuilding the middle class? Now is the time to furlough the consultants and tune out the bolsters groups home and toss the political scripts. Don't let them invalidate you. She does things differently. She plays by her own rules. It's time for we the people to break up the cronyism. And that goes for finding candidates. Looking to our communities, our PTAs, our service clubs, small businesses, tea party rallies, and city halls. For people who are willing to lead. She's building the future, saying to the old dogs, your time is absolutely She up. doesn't care about the old dogs in the party at all. We deserve better than the people who call themselves our leaders, but we won't get it unless we're ready to fight, and this is one fight that is worth it. The power of Palin. The bottom line is still, she has clout. So you are trying to mobilize, to get involved, either run themselves or support candidates they like. And she says the work isn't done yet. The next election is 20 months away. The last thing we need is Washington, D.C. vetting our candidates. I would not be in the U.S. Senate today if it were not for Governor Sarah Palin.
to get to be with you all. It is pretty cool to see some of the college Republicans sitting down here that we met last night. Good. Met some of you in the lobby in addition to some great independents and libertarians who are out there too. They were awesome. And then last night too, meeting some of our proud, wonderful members of the military. I love you guys, you're my heroes. I love you because I love freedom. And like I always say, if you love your freedom, thank a vet. We thank you guys. It's really, really good to be here today. I love coming back here because there are always so many young people, or as you're known by the folks across the river, Obamacare suckers. <laughs> Yep, you are the ones, right? You're the ones who'll pay the bills in our brave new world. They forgot that part, didn't they, when they said that you were the change that you were waiting for. Turns out you have the change that they were waiting for. You have the change, you have the fives, the tens, and the twenties. Well, it is great to be back here. Because this is the place, CPAC is known as the place where the future of conservatism always starts. Whether it was Ronald Reagan back in 75 or Dr. Ben Carson just last year, this is where it starts. And it's because of you and your energy, your commitment, your commitment to the greatest country on earth and everything that makes her exceptional. It's because of you. So I look at you and I look out at the year ahead and I feel good about America. Now when we were here last year, mm, there was some reeling going on because uh, you know, of the election results and our fellow Americans said, decided evidently to double down on Hopi Changey and the Sages of the Beltway and their sock puppets at MS LSD. Hot tip, Mark Levin. They said that we had to give up on our principles, give up our principles because they said the train of history was roaring to the left, so jump on board or get left behind. But then something happened. That hope and change, it went from a catchy campaign slogan to a reality. And along the way, hope and change, yes we can. It became, no you can't. No, you can't log on to the website. No, you can't keep your health care. No, you can't make a phone call without Michelle Obama knowing. This is the third time this week you've dialed Pizza Hut delivery. <laughs> but yes, something did happen. We became a wiser republic than a year ago. Americans know now what the giants of our movement have always told us. People like Friedman and Reagan and Margaret Thatcher. And we said, there ain't no such thing as a free lunch. There is no free birth control. There's no free phone. There's no free doctor visits. There's no free Fritos. There's no free ride. Someone pays, someone always pays. And if you don't know who that someone is, it's probably you. <laughs> Americans found that out again this year. And hopefully those Social engineering politicos learn something as well. Americans aren't quite as obedient as they thought we were. See, they set up a lot of hoops, making us pay for insurance that we don't want, don't need, telling us, ah, oh, nothing to see in Benghazi. Move along, move along. 
nor at the IRS. Nothing amiss. Not even his pigeon. No. <laughs> Making us bear the brunt of that dopey wobbling on the world stage. But we didn't jump through those hoops the way that we were supposed to. It's like y'all went rogue. I thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and um, speaking of y'all, Texas, thank you. Thank you, Texas, because liberty needs a Congress on cruise control. something did happen. The awakening began, and Senator Ted Cruz helped keep them awake. His filibuster it, it worked in waking people up to the folly of a government takeover of another one-sixth of our economy. He forced debate. He told his colleagues it was time, time to stand up, time to use the tools of the Constitution, the power of the purse, to fulfill their campaign promises and to stop Obamacare. But our army balked. We'd hoped that they were just reloading, but instead they retreated. And worse, worse, they joined the lapdogs in the lame stream to trash the foot soldiers who had fought for America. And Ted Cruz, he had a clever way of doing it, too. Dr. Seuss, who'd have thunk? Who'd have thunk? Reach yeah, good idea. Maybe I'll just ad-lib something. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. But uh, there he was reading it on the, uh, on the floor of the Senate, and through airwaves, he was telling his kids, I'm thinking of you thinking of all our kids. And I have five kids. I have five kids, so reading Green Eggs and Ham over all those years to each one, you know, man, you totally have it memorized by the time, especially by the time Trig was born. So I had to spice it up a bit. And little Trig, lucky little fella, his bedtime story, now it goes something like this. <laughs> I do not like this. Uncle Sam, I do not like his health care scam. I do not like... dirty crooks or how they lie and cook the books. <laughs> I do not like when Congress steals. I do not like their crony deals. I do not like this spying, man. I do not like, oh yes we can. <laughs> like this spending spree. We're smart, we know there's nothing free. I do not like reporter smug replies when I complain about their lies. <laughs> I do not like this kind of hope and we won't take it. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Internet 
I saw a couple lines on the internet on that, and I winged the other ones. Okay. But friends, Ted Cruz and Mike Lee and Paul and Gowdy and Gosar and Gomer, etc. We've got some good guys in there. Good guys who, they're good guys. They carry the common sense gene, right? The common sense gene. And they know that we are a nation with a government, not the other way around. They're constitutionalists. And they were sent to DC to fight the battle there for us. So it's time. It's time that we send them reinforcements. They need their reinforcements because you see families are hurting today. Hard workers, hard working families, they're caught between the crony capitalism that benefits the politically connected and the income redistribution that benefits the politically favored. But still, I feel good about America because conservatives haven't forgotten the America beyond the ruling classes, wealthy DC suburbs. I'm talking the places where most of the people who do the working and the serving and the building and the tax paying live. That's where you'll find amazing America. We're staying true to our principles. Got real solutions to real problems, and you got to hear some of those solutions the last couple of days. And you're not just sitting back, just hanging, hanging with the Choom Gang. <laughs> I hope you're not. Just letting DC control the people and bankrupt our country in order to fundamentally transform it. Now, that's why I feel good, because you're not just putting up with this. We do have some great pro-freedom, free market, pro-family, bitter clingers and wingers, AKA great leaders there. And they're proposing ways to actually help the middle class and allow equal opportunity to work. And then through self-initiative, let everyone be lifted and succeed. That's why I feel good. And because I hear from you, and I, I see you, I, I just feel that we know we've got each other's back, and I, and I feel that you know that this is the stirring of a great awakening. I do believe that the eyes of America are open. Unfortunately, though, some would want you to just hit the snooze button and roll back over, like, hush, America, go back to sleep, little lambs. Go back to sleep, close those eyes. Some of these folks are in the GOP establishment. Well, and they are a different breed of cat. They, they say that the, the smartest thing that we can do right now is just lay low, stay out of the way while, say, Obamacare crashes and burns on its own, and the economy sputters to a halt. Well, forget that solvency and sovereignty stuff, just, just lay low. And while internationally we so tick off our allies and we lead a world that is looking for that shining city on a hill again. We lead them from behind. The result is some very, very, very bad dudes gain ground. This, instead of putting the fear of God in our enemies, well, proving peace through strength, and that is only brought to you courtesy of the red, white, and blue. That's only what the United States military can do. But some GOP experts, they subscribe to the old saying, you know, don't interrupt while they're in the process of destroying themselves. Eh, maybe true, but you do interrupt when they are in the process of destroying your country. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to stop them. 2014, we're going to stop them and 
by the way, you complacent ones who had just shined the boot that would stomp on our neck, working the statist agenda of Obama's. This applies to you too in the 2016 presidential race. to run this morning. I was so busy, man. I did some hot yoga and didn't get to run. No, no. But, uh, you know, speaking of those who just carry the water, man, I feel sorry for some of those cabinet members. Actually, take Secretary of State John Kerry. Oof. You're saying take them, take them. No, really, um, I, I feel sorry because, uh, it's just draining on him, I'm sure. He, he does not look happy. He, he's sent to message this president's dazed and confused strategy. Poor guy, you can just see it on him. It is, bless his heart. But no need, <laughs> no need anymore though to ask him uh, why, John, why the long face? <laughs> now we know. policies that the cabinet has to explain and justify, how do you convey to uh, Putin the threat that sounds like, Vladimir, don't mess around or uh, you're going to feel my flexibility because um, I got a phone and I got a pen and um, I, I can dial really fast and poke you with my pen. Pinky promise! No. Promise? Promises? This is the guy who promised to provide for the sick, but there are more uninsured today than when Obama began all of this. He promised jobs for the jobless, but fewer people work today than since the peanut farmer was our president. And the average family is bringing home $4,000 less today than when Obama started all this. He promised us a safe, peaceful world. Promised he's got Al-Qaeda on the run. Yeah, perhaps towards us. <laughs> and safer? He, he would gut our arsenal while he allows others, enemies, to enrich theirs. Oh, man, that's just like a liberal on gun control. Mr. President, the only thing that stops a bad guy with a nuke is a good guy with a nuke. That tip NRA. the planet and stop the rise of the oceans, but the planet's not listening to Dr. Obama. And the only thing rising in his la-la land is the Russian Empire. No, I'm sorry, but really, I'm probably being too hard on the president. After all, who could have seen this coming? Again, some just going along to get along. We need another come to Jesus meeting. It's time. And bottom line is, today the Democrats' agenda is a lost cause. President Obama, though, he's nothing if not poll tested. So even he knows that the deep issue of our time is that oppressive stagnation facing the middle class, those good working class families that just can't get ahead. And that's why he baits the GOP establishment into kind of a tit for tat over things to distract 
and then they pander and uh, he in the White House, they do such damage. But their agenda, it's failure and fiasco on steroids. So America is counting on the GOP to get it right. And that's why the establishment can't blow it. No Republican gets elected promising higher taxes, wasteful spending, increased debt, bigger government, rewarding lawbreakers via amnesty? No. So why are they voting for these things now? And why reward them with your vote? GOP Beltway Boys. Yeah, GOP Beltway Boys. You know that 2010 election victory that swept you into power? You didn't build that. The Tea Party did. So dance with the one that brought you, and you want another sweep? Then grab a broom and join us at the party. Yes, in this awakening, eyes are open, we're stronger now, we're wiser now, and God knows we are hungry, and there aren't enough low information voters in the country to save the other side this year if we don't retreat. And when we meet next, Lord willing, Harry Reid, either he will be the Senate Minority Leader or uh, a blackjack dealer in Vegas, <laughs> where everything stays in Vegas. OK, another reason, though, to feel good about our future and our movement is because culturally, man, we are pushing back against what well, some would call these perpetual panties in a wad people, and you know them. These folks, man, they are, they're quick with a quote about some latest outrage against the latest victimized identity group. They're professionals at taking offense. It's what they do. And their media minions are even quicker at seeking them out and publicizing their manufactured outrage. And the play is always the same. Someone on the right says something that's not politically correct, um, then <laughs> just once or twice. And, or, you know, it can be distorted to not sound politically correct. And these perpetual, perpetually wadded up people, they, they get to work. And they claim to want tolerance and open debate. But, you know, the, the goal of theirs really is the complete opposite. It, their goal is to shut up anyone who doesn't toe their line. Man, whatever happened, if you see or hear something that you know, kind of bugged you, buck up or stay in the truck. That's how we grew up. <laughs> remember, for instance, remember when their skirts got all tangled up over their heads just recently when our buddy from Duck Dynasty, <laughs> Phil, remember this? Here, here's Phil. He's, he's talking about faith with a reporter from GQ. First mistake. But in between saying it, that he loves humanity, he loves all us sinners, and leave it to God to judge. Well, he quoted the Bible, and he got colorful in expressing his opinion. So what did that brilliant TV network do? They fired him. They canned the devout Christian for expressing his devout Christian views on a television show about his devout Christian family. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, because nothing's ever wrong, nothing out of line on cable TV. It's those executives who get to school America on standards. Yeah, they're, they're the ones. Right. Well, in another time, though, in another time, that might have been it. Phil would have stayed fired. But not now, not this time. People all over America knew. 
It wasn't just wingers and clingers with TV shows. People all over America understood that Phil's right to express himself, that fight that he had to undertake, well, that was all about our right to express ourselves. His fight was our fight, and we pushed back, and we won. And now everyone is happy, happy, happy. You know, these are the same fainting couch liberals whining that we disrespect women. That's bull. Hey, Democrats, it's your leaders who are demeaning to women. Liberals seem to think that the women of America are just cheap dates, you know? <laughs> Feed them a few lines about that free birth control. Throw in some scary quotes about the war on women, and, and they will be yours. Don't bother their pretty little heads with tax policy, or debilitating debt, or energy independence. You know, imagine if they treated the men like that. Quick word with the sisters here, okay? Just quick. Guys, just give us a minute. Just go play some racing game on your cell phone or something for a second, okay? <laughs> Tetris or whatever you go. Okay, I, I, while well, I talk to the ladies, just for a second here. Girls, we know better than to fall for that victimization line from the president and his party. I know you know better. But if you have a friend or a sister or a roommate, Falling for this hooey, you gotta set them straight. Ask them, who's really stereotyping you? Is it the people who believe that you are a thinking, achieving, striving, strong individual? Or those who put you in a box and they define you still by body parts? Enticing girls to think that they need these guys to grow government to take care of them. Women, don't let them use you unless you choose to be their political pawn or just their piece of accessory on their arm. Uh, honey, that's not liberation. That's subjugation. And this sisterhood fights against that. mastery that big government would want over us. So, psst, who are the real women liberators? Hey, you can join us, be legit. Cause, come on libs, can you really sing, I am woman, hear me? No, because donkeys just bray. Only mama grizzlies can say, hear me roar. Our values, it's independence, it's work ethic, it's family, faith, and freedom. Be bold in making our case. We're the heirs of Thatcher and Stanton and Anthony. So stop apologizing and start evangelizing and infiltrating, influencing pop culture. If the boys aren't up to the challenge, conservative women are happy to lead the charge. Yes. soul believes in and respects the power and purposeful potential of every woman, so much so that we're the party with the plank that protects even our littlest sisters in the womb. Last year, I 
stood here and I declared that we're not here to rebrand a party. We're here to rebuild a country. And what I meant was we shouldn't be in the business of just using the right poll tested phraseology or pander to the right special interests. We're in the business of digging ourselves out of debt and restoring competitiveness, educating our children and liberating our potential. Truth be told, I think it's from coming from a very diverse family and having a diverse career and being independent, I don't care what you call yourself or how you rebrand a party. If you stand for those right things, I stand with you. And to stand here is to stand on the shoulders of giants, the men and women who've come before at podiums like this, in front of patriots like you. You're the key. You are what matters in all of this. But they, coming before, devoting their lives to preserving and protecting what is best in us. Some were veterans, some politicians, some housewives, speaking to soldiers, and students, and teachers, and firemen, fishermen, farmers, of, of every race, color, and creed. All were part of a remarkable movement of freedom and human flourishing. And for all that they have given us, all they achieved, such a great price they paid in their honor, work hard, and feel good, knowing that the best is yet to come. This is a great awakening. The age of Obama is almost over. end of an error. He is the lamest of lame ducks. So expand our ranks. We can do this. Expand our ranks to save our country because our sensible, imperative mission for small government and big freedom is big enough for every American who loves liberty and trusts the individual. And I know this because we know America, not from the top down but from the heart looking out, and our message resonates. We believe in the promise of America. That message does resonate, and it has been since a band of brothers dumped tea in the Boston Harbor. We have got to be that band of brothers and sisters again, not to fundamentally transform America, but to save it and to fundamentally restore the promise of America. And it is because of you, it's we the people, because of you that I have never been more optimistic about the future of our one nation under God. So stand up and stiffen your spine. You gotta fight for it. The best is yet to come. God bless you, CPAC.